First and foremost, I really would like to thank you for this uh, truly political debate uh, this morning because we've been uh, indeed discussing the most pressing issues Europe and the Europeans are facing today. Aggression of Russia against Ukraine, war on our continent, uh, and the economic and uh, social consequences of high energy prices, high inflation, and rising cost of living been mentioned by almost all who intervene and present it in very eloquent manner by the leaders of the political groups represented uh, now by uh, Madame Reintke. And I appreciate uh, what I felt was uh, truly general support uh, for the package the European Commission has proposed uh, yesterday. But what was uh, very clear in your uh, statements, be it from Mr. Mureshan or Madame Karantsova, but I would say all of the honorable members who took the floor, is that you would like us to be more ambitious, you would like us to be faster, and you want to see more details how these proposed measures would be translated into the real life. But I think that you will all agree with me that uh, if it comes to what is on the table for our leaders at the European Council, that there are all elements uh, for the solutions to tackle this energy crisis we are facing right now. We are proposing to buy the gas together, as Madame Grappini was referring to, or Mr. Schindervan in his uh, remarks, something like uh, one and a half hour ago. Uh, to be uh, more precise, what we are proposing is to purchase together at least 15%, so we can do more. But we need to start somewhere, and uh, uh, we are going to address uh, through this at least 50% purchase exactly that amount of gas which was most difficult to get uh, to complete uh, filling up of our storages and which was also the most expensive. And, of course, uh, this is uh, not... Uh, easy exercise because uh, we need to set up this new system and at the same time we have to also respect uh, the long-term contracts uh, which are in place and which been valid. But I think that uh, now we have the solution how to push uh, uh, forward and we are going to discuss how to combine this uh, uh, measure with all other measures which we propose to make sure that we'll have uh, security of supplies and adequate flows of uh, energies into the European Union. Next very important point, which was mentioned by many of you, was uh, the solidarity, especially with those countries which are landlocked and which would have problems uh, uh, if the situation would really become very precarious, and uh, the European way of uh, sharing and protecting the level playing field uh, and our single market, as it was uh, uh, proposed by Mr. Cholos. All of you have been highlighting the burden our citizens and businesses are carrying because of the high energy prices. And I would like to reassure you, because it was mentioned many times uh, by Madame Irache Garcia, Perez, Mr. Bellamy, Monsieur Sejourné, that we are going to present to you in the first quarter of the next year new electricity market design where we are going to decouple gas from electricity pricing because we know that the market design which served as well until pre-war uh, times is not uh, functioning anymore and therefore we need to have new electricity market design to uh, be more appropriate for our European uh, economy. On top of it, we are going to uh, propose new complementary benchmark to TTF and uh, to be sure that we act uh, with uh, adequate agility, we are also proposing this market uh, correction mechanism to react to the uh, concrete situation of today. The same comes for uh, Iberian uh, model because we see that there are strong merits in this model how to limit the electricity prices uh, in Europe, but we know that there is a lot of questions uh, we have to answer in a way that it would not lead uh, uh, to inadequate uh, increase of the consumption of gas because then we would again be faced uh, with a lack of energy supplies to the European Union. And of course, what is important for big businesses, we also presented a uh, new temporary framework for state aid to help energy intensive industries across the Europe. So the proposals are on the table. Now, of course, we need the green light and support uh, 
of uh, the European Council. So we can sit with the energy ministers, we can sit with you, members of the European Parliament, to hammer out uh, uh, the details. This is very clear and present urgency, and we should act in this manner. Therefore, if you, if you allow me to conclude with a strong, I would underscore strong plea to the European Parliament. The Repower EU is discussed uh, in your committees uh, in this House. And you would, I hope, agree with me that we need the Repower EU now. We need to use it. If necessary, we need to boost it. And we need the Repower EU so we can transfer this 40 billion of euros from the cohesion policy to Repower EU so we can support the households, we can support the SMEs in Europe. So my strong plea would be, please, Make sure that you would respect your calendar and we would have a vote on the Repower EU in November. The citizens of Europe, businesses in Europe are waiting for this decision and we are ready to work with you to explore all other possibilities how to use uh, unused recovery and resilience facility loans, to use all financial firepower we have at our disposal so we can help the economy and citizens of the European Union. So I think that if you would... Uh, uh, if you would demonstrate this uh, can-do attitude and this uh, proactive approach in this very difficult situation that our debate in November would not be focused on uh, what needs to be done, but how we are going to use the funds, how we are going to use these new tools uh, which we will be developing in the course of the next weeks, and I think that it would be the best answer to the concerns of the European citizens, European businesses and peoples of the European Union. Thank you very much, Madam President. Herzlichen Dank, Herr Kommissar. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Now, on behalf of Council, I give the floor to Minister Beck.